so you can tell it's getting late in the day. <laughs> Daniel, come on in. Hello, Alan. How are you? Late in the day. Yes. We're now about to get cloudy with a chance of identity. Cloudy with a chance of identity, okay. Yes. So everyone talks about the cloud, but it's really a lot of different topics. Yeah, the question, do you support cloud, is a really tough one to answer because there's so many pieces to it. So if we try and break it down, mm -hmm. right, the, the one of the aspects of the cloud, right, we see these various things as a service. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, I guess we'll start with IAAS. Infrastructure as a service. Okay, <laughs> which means <laughs> that it's still late in the day. Mm -hmm. So basically what this means is everything that you would expect to be able to run your application given to you as a service in the cloud somewhere, right? So, so like Amazon. Amazon. OpenStack, Microsoft Azure. Azure, any of these kinds of things where basically I can say, give me a machine that's configured kind of like this and it's got this much memory and this much CPU and I've got a box. So in, in the old world, lots of companies had their own data centers where they were managing the hardware and mm -hmm. installing it and, and basically building out all their infrastructure on their own. In this case, they're now saying, eh, let's not do that anymore. There are great companies like Amazon or a virtual Backspace data center. or someone else that can do that for me. Right, mm -hmm. okay. Then on top of that, we've got another one that we've seen. It's funny that you said on top of that and then wrote it below. Well, yeah, but you look at it from the other way around and it's, you know, we'll it's there. Around. Right, so platform as a service. It's the next level of abstraction. The other way around, right? <laughs> so it's the next layer up. Mm -hmm. And basically it's, we really don't want to have to care about all of the stuff necessary to run our app. What we really get to with platform as a service is here's my application, do whatever you need to make it work and run. So this, this is about the developer and abstracting things away from the developer so that they can just focus on writing their code. I write my code on my laptop, I push it to a platform as a service, the platform as a service configures everything underneath that that app is running on and I don't need to think about it. If I want to scale it out a little bit, I have a little way, simple ways of doing that, but I'm not managing any of the infrastructure sitting under my, my code. Right. Mm -hmm. So then the question comes up, what does it mean for us to support the cloud? Well, so, so let's, can I change the picture? I feel free. So not that your picture is bad. But it was upside down. It's good. Um, you the blue pen? I do like blue. But what we're saying is in the identity world, you're going to have different worlds. You're going to still have some areas where people have their own data centers that they manage. You're going to have your cloud infrastructure as a service providers where you could be deploying apps here, right? You have some apps deployed there. You may have platform as a service, um, and examples of platform as a service are things like a Cloud Foundry, where you might be deploying your own private platform as a service, or there's public services like Heroku or Engine Yard, or um, there are many out there that are, are quite popular, but the basic gist is if you have it, applications running on these things, there needs to be an identity context for this. I'm going to take purple down. Okay. Right? So mapping this to what we've looked at in all of the other diagrams, right? what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to have an IAM solution yes. that's able to provide all of the services we've spoken about right, to these apps and to these apps and to these apps. So this is a really important point. Because if you go back to the first video we ever did, we talked about the importance of identity in terms of abstracting it away from applications. Kind of looked like that, didn't so it? So developers didn't have to worry about building it every time into their own applications. The same thing is, exists with your cloud. If you have multiple clouds, whether it's an infrastructure as a service, your own data center, a platform as a service, whatever, you don't want to have to manage identity specifically for every one of your clouds. You want to abstract it out have one centralized place to manage it and hook in all your apps into it. Right. So, so before you go on, I am using you brown. You have the brown pen. I'm upping your purple with brown. Oh no. I see your brown and I raise you an orange. <laughs> So, okay, so this is our diagram now about protecting these applications, mm -hmm. right? One of the interesting aspects around this is that 
we might actually have multiple platforms that we're hooking out to, right? And one of the big challenges that we have is very often the embedded identities in each of those platforms don't know about each other. They can't work with each other. Right. And as we've spoken before, machine-to-machine -machine communication is becoming more and more interesting. Right. What if we need to get these machines to talk to each other? Right. Or at least applications running within those environments to be able to provide services to well, each other. I love where you're going with this, and I will now shift to Pink. Pink because is good. What you were really talking about is the whole concept of identity relationship management. That if these persist in, in, in individual silos, you can't share information across your clouds in a simple, easy way. Where if you, as if you abstract your identity out and have a connection of all the relationships between all your clouds, you now can do identity relationship management in a simpler, more efficient manner. So I Absolutely. will say this is about relationships across clouds. And that's a very, very powerful picture to have. Right? It is. So, yes. Go on. Yeah, I, I don't know why I just did that. To you. <laughs> right I here. feel I feel chastised. <laughs> So my, my next question on this is that, great, we can support all of these applications out on all of these different things. Yes. What about this? Do we still have to have this tied in our data center? The server. The server. The answer to that is no, I say, no. No. <laughs> right. This can be deployed in a cloud or it can be deployed on premise. It's up to the... So the this could be in the data center. This could be on... I as in infrastructure as a service. Mm -hmm. Would we do that on platform as a service? So technically there are ways to do it, but we don't see many people asking for infrastructure to be run on a platform as a service, but rather plugging into it using things like service brokers or routers or things like that to persist that identity the way you were talking I about. I think that comes a lot to what you were saying is that PaaS is really aimed at the development cycle. Yeah. And IAM is really aimed at providing the infrastructure. Well, I think the most important piece about that is people get caught up on where the server is, when in fact the hardest part of identity is integrating across thousands of different resources across your enterprise that are on-premise, in the cloud, legacy infrastructure, standards-based infrastructure. That, that's the complexity. Right. Deploying this stuff takes minutes. This is the easy part. Yes. And the, key, the, the sort of nice piece about it is that since we've got that in one place, mm -hmm all of these and deploying these out is simply a matter of bringing them into our central identity. Yeah. I'd say the other thing that's important to point out is this can also be deployed as an IDAS. In other words, we have all kinds of partners. Oh, you're throwing another, another term out I am. here. I am. I think we do have to put in there that there is identity as a service where you're now enabling your identity infrastructure as a service that you provide to um, different resources to consume and you know there are great partners like Accenture and many others that build their own IDAS with our infrastructure that they offer out to their install bases. Cool. Yeah. Thank you Alan. That was Thank very you. educational and helpful. <laughs>